Hey, welcome to this podcast. This episode focuses on innovation and the future of Italy and its place in the world as a technological and economical heavyweight. Why did you come to this country is something that I was asked on the day I officially moved to Italy, the country my grandparents had left after Second World War in search for a better future and it's a question I'm still being asked up to this day. A simple yet complex question implying better opportunities elsewhere. A resignation to a seemingly static system that seems to slow down innovation rather than create new opportunities. Yet, Italy has one of the strongest economies in the world and it is not mainly driven by tourism and food, contrary to popular belief. In fact, on this episode of the Heysal podcast, I am honored to have the opportunity to talk to the expert in innovation and technology in Italy. Emilia Garito, IT engineer and CEO of Quantum Leap, one of the first Italian patent brokers, does not only have an impressive curriculum spanning from past employment at Finn Mechanica Group, the Italian Air Force and working for NATO countries, she also has her finger on the pulse of everything that is currently happening in the world of technology and innovation as the curator of TEDx Roma. She is an expert in open innovation, artificial intelligence and complex systems modeling and I hope that you find some inspiration in the conversation that I am about to have with her. Emilia, thank you so much for coming on the Hey Cell podcast. There are so many questions I would like to ask you and so many topics I would like to cover. Um, let's see how much we managed to get into in these 20 minutes. And I would like to start right off the bat with um, a topic that I'm sure that a lot of expats, Italians, both in the country but also abroad, are going to be very interested in, uh, interested in. And that's the topic of innovation in Italy. And uh, I'd like to ask you, why should somebody invest in these times and days into Italy in terms of innovation? Or why should somebody uh, come to Italy or even stay in Italy? Because we hear a lot of stories about brain power leaving the country and talent leaving the country. So why should somebody invest in Italy as a place of innovation? That's a very interesting question. So first of all, thank you for this in this invitation. So uh, I'm very happy to uh, speak about these uh, themes with you. So starting from your first uh, first uh, um, question, so um, there are many reasons because the people can invest in Italy. And uh, uh, first of all, there is uh, uh, one that is uh, creativity nobody knows because uh, all excellence and competencies are spread into the territory is not concentrated like in Silicon Valley. Mm. You can find a very high level of um, researchers and uh, uh, engineers and uh, people that is able to do innovation. Even if a lot of uh, minds, uh, you, as you know, are abroad in Italy and in other kind of countries, but we have still a lot of possibility to create new format, new design of innovation, and uh, there are capability to integrate many different technologies in a creative approach. And uh, so uh, the uh, small entrepreneurs are very capable also to dot this, uh, to connect these dots. But of course, there are many other problems in Italy. That are the tax uh, uh, rating, the um, bureaucracy. So in the end, uh, uh, I think that uh, the, the reason because the people can come here is because they can find really a high level of creativity and uh, um, ideas. It is uh, really uh, more, the most important thing for the technology in the future, for the, for the future. The good strategy for uh, uh, that kind of uh, industry company could be having uh, its research center in Italy and maybe the commercial offices uh, in other part of the world because uh, also the so the cost uh, the labor cost is uh, uh, really competitive if uh, you compare with the other countries in Italy in, uh, in Europe too 
and so this is also uh, uh, another another uh, advantage for uh, uh, an industrial company uh, coming from out of Italy. And um, in the end, there is also another uh, theme that is uh, not so uh, banal that Italy is a place where you can live really, really at high level of quality of life in any kind of region you wanted to go. And so, uh, it, it's uh, after uh, COVID, post-COVID, maybe this is also an advantage that Italy can offer to the people that wanted to stay here and work and create value. So you already alluded to something, and I want to get into that a bit later if there's still time, which is um, eventual pitfalls and obstacles uh, for innovation in Italy, but we'll get to get to that topic later. Um, what do you think, where does Italy stand in terms of innovation and technology compared to the rest of the world? You mentioned Silicon Valley, for example, there is no such a thing here, or at least maybe there is something similar here around in the, in the Milan area, maybe, maybe there are networks we are not aware of. But how do you see Italy compared to the rest of the world in terms of innovation and technology? Uh, there are many fields in which uh, um, uh, Italy is a leader uh, in Europe and uh, in the world. Uh, for example, in robotics, in chemistry, mm -hmm. new materials, in biotech, and also in AI, because we have a, a good, uh, a very uh, uh, good level of uh, research in, uh, in AI and also in physics. So, um, Italy is one of the, the industrial uh, country in the world. Uh, it's very nice uh, and funny, let me say, when the, the people speak and think about Italy, because uh, the narrative about Italy is uh, a, a country, a beautiful country, where there is uh, uh, good food uh, and a lot of tourists uh, and uh, good music and good right. art. But if Italy... Uh, should be only these, Italy couldn't be one of the uh, ten uh, countries in the world, one of the seven countries in the world for uh, uh, technologies. So probably there is something more that is not uh, uh, very well, uh, I don't know, revealed to the people, but uh, uh, the reason. And this is, uh, of course, research, innovation, and also the capability to do um, entrepreneurs in terms of uh, trying to create small business and uh, uh, produce uh, a new uh, kind of uh, products based on this uh, new capability. The big li limitation of Italy is uh, uh, in the scaling of these uh, small businesses. This is mm. the problem that we have in Italy. So it's not in terms of producing technology and innovation, but in terms of scale. Uh, and scale the business coming from this uh, uh, technology and uh, innovation and uh, uh, research competencies. Mm. It seems to me sometimes that uh, Italy kind of is divided in two worlds. And I don't mean the just about the north-south divide, but there's like a digital divide between those that um, create uh, machine learning applications just you know in, on the highest levels and then you have other people who do not even respond to their emails just to give a very banal example so how do you bridge a divide like that because a lot of traditional businesses might not see any use in investing in technology um, so how can you bridge that cultural divide when it comes to approaching uh, a digital world? Uh, the digital divide is a, a global issue. It's not only Italian, but mm. it's also a, 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 an issue that touches more the country like Italy or Japan, where mm. the um, aging uh, uh, rate is uh, very high. Mm. And so one approach in which I strongly believe uh, is uh, called by Japan Society 5.0. Society 5.0 is a uh, is a really it, it was a, a concept. Now it became uh, a sort of um, I don't know approach methodology in order to to guide innovation and uh, um, exponential technologies 
in a find a way to make better the life of the old people and connect them with the young people in order to make sure this digital divide. Mm-hmm. But the, the point is not how to do it because we have technology to do it and competencies. The point is we wanted to do it. So Society 5.0 is a, a, a cultural approach, is a new vision in order to use AI uh, for better putting the people at the center of choices. So the, the issue is uh, how to, to use uh, technologies is a, a sort of a financial issue because this acceleration in providing new technological tools sometimes doesn't use, doesn't matter, though are not so uh, necessary like uh, we think. So the point is uh, using AI, using new technology, but also to create these bridges between uh, the people that are at the end of that life and try to connect them much better with the emerging uh, uh, social um, so uh, opportunities in a life. And, um, is it possible? This is possible. And uh, um, the point is, of course, try to find the balance, the right balance to the opportunity to do it and uh, the, uh, the vision of the financial part that wanted to invest in the technology of the future that maybe wanted to push much attention to the new tools new opportunities uh, of services for the new and young generation for uh, money reason. Mm. So uh, this is the big challenge of the future in uh, AI and uh, digital technologies uh, always. So this is a, what um, the two part of uh, the also the uh, uh, scientists uh, have to uh, um, to harmonize in order to uh, guarantee to the industry to do business, but also guarantee to the society mm-hmm. to be considered uh, the the most important scope of innovation as it should have to be. Right. Um. That's a good transition into uh, the next topic um, because society is undergoing a transitional period period at the moment uh, with COVID-19, obviously with both uh, horrific um, costs in terms of lives uh, and costs in terms of um, businesses. But then there are also lights at the end of the tunnel. Um, there are also chances there as there, it seems to be a move into the digital age. I mean both forced obviously because many did not have any other um, alternatives but um, now everybody is seems to be kind of or some people seem to be very happy about this and it gives a big push to companies to move into this digital age but are there do you see any risks that if companies approach this digital age without any prior knowledge without any guidance mm-hmm. and without any plan don't you see the risk that a lot of companies will lose themselves, will not have any satisfactory results, and once the chance presents itself, will go straight back to the old ways because their experience was not good? I think that uh, companies and uh, uh, people are um, learning together. So I think that it's important having a, a, a really good communication in order to really understand the needs using technological technological tools and digital tools. So I'm not for uh, um, find and pursue the way of digital digitalization in terms of smart working, just because we uh, we knew uh, this <laughs> opportunity and we used. Uh, I think that it's very good um, having the opportunity to criticize, together analyze the advantages of uh, the smart working and the digital tools in order to use what we really need. So um, I think that in the future we can have the uh, 
opportunity to give uh, more value, uh, to put more value at our time in working or also in personal life. But uh, we need to, uh, to find a way um, to be lead of technology and not followers. And so to uh, be using this new way that we have now without uh, make low the level of quality of our work. And having the possibility to use digital tools, we quickly understand what it means and what it, it is in, represents in terms of impact in our work. Uh, so the management of what we have on the table, paper or uh, screens, is up to us. And uh, companies know this. So this is the time to communicate with the team, small, big team, and to un understand the, the, the way, the, the best way to leave the people uh, uh, fine in uh, working whatever they want, but making them uh, more uh, mature in uh, controlling their job and also the job of their colleagues. So we need to be more connect and not uh, uh, so far, but also we need also to understand uh, how we have to use also the physical uh, work. Probably it will be different. Probably we need to put also more experience in a working physical meeting than in the, in the past. Um, so I think that many things can change in a positive way but only if we uh, have time to stop, to understand, analyze, and decide what we need uh, in order to make our work better uh, and maintain the same level of quality or much better, if it's possible. What exciting innovations in AI are happening in Italy uh, at the moment? And why has nobody heard uh, of ICAP, which is a humanoid robot project um, under the a guide of Italy, and why does everybody know Boston Dynamics and their um, four-legged spot robots and other Terminator-like machines that they are creating there? Uh, this is the right question, because uh, as I told before, the problem of Italy is the narrative. It's a big problem and also a big challenge, because uh, um, uh, Italy uh, is not able to, uh, to communicate what the reason and what it is, what the reason Italy and what it is Italy in terms of uh, um, innovation. So there are many people in Italy that, uh, you are right, better know, uh, I don't know, Boston Dynamics than iCube, that is made by the uh, Italian Institute for Technology, that is a sort of MIT. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Italian Institute of Technology is a a much better known, well known in the US and Europe than in Italy. Mm. So the problem is the narrative. So uh, a starting point to change the speed of Italy, both in terms of innovation, but mostly in terms of uh, competition, positive competition, is starting from a new narrative of the country. Because it's necessary to do it for the people that live in the country. There are many other kinds of possibility uh, to, to do um, some job that is not only, I don't know, doctor, lawyer, or, uh, um, I don't know, pizza, pizza makers. <laughs> my, my answer is that the, the reason is because Italy is a, a country of uh, doers, inventors, creators, but it's not a country of managers and communicators. Hmm. So we need to invest in this matter and start to invest a lot of money in uh, uh, change the, the image of the country. It's a really, really important. The, with the sort of uh, very uh, easy uh, tools, like through TV, uh, um, mm. so um, there is a, a wonderful um, format in uh, Canada that is, a, is called How to Do. It's just a way to inform uh, the young people how to do something. But where do you go to uh, discover how to do, for example, a TV, a car, or something like that? The Canadian industries. So they show the, 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 the industrial ecosystem that lives in Canada uh, through this very easy way. 
and all the people that love uh, look at a car is done we know that the car is done in that way but in canada mm -hmm. so canada to provide cars it's easy to change the culture if you have this kind of strategy vision and competence of course to do and mm -hmm. we need to improve this in Italy. Uh, considering all these things that you said and we didn't really have time to get into the obstacles uh, of italy which were have to do with bureaucracy and systems that have been set up and grown Uh, maybe uncontrollable over the years but uh, despite that where do you where do you see italy in 10 to 20 years um, and where do you see the biggest chances for italy in terms of innovation yes i think that the big chance is to connect research with industries industries uh, need to have uh, the support of uh, italian researchers centers because they are very they have a good quality, uh, high uh, level of quality, and they need to, to uh, make themselves more open in accepting the technology coming from outside of them and coming from research centers, so also coming from small enterprises that are the 95% in Italy. Mm -hmm. So the big uh, opportunity and challenge in the future for Italy in an industrial, uh, of course, uh, field is uh, try to find a sort of ecosystem in which all competencies, industries, research centers are all very well connected in uh, providing innovation together. So with this uh, approach, you will solve two problems. First is the problem of the dimension of the industries in Italy. That there are very a lot of small uh, companies mm. that connected each other they became of course uh, bigger and they can uh, have a, a different role in Europe and in the world and the second thing is that you can accelerate the process of creation of innovation because if you have um, the possibility as industry to uh, cooperate with the research centers or other innovators that can from outside of you of course you cut a lot of cost and timing in research and in the prototyping and innovating and all of these uh, ingredients are in italy spread in the territory so we need to connect all of these uh, uh, realities find that scout that and connect each other and uh, and go together in the same direction is not impossible we are a sort of uh, incubator is not silicon valley in us But Italy is a sort of Silicon Valley because it's a small country where all competencies are spread. We don't need to have a, a, an incubator in a region or in another region of Italy. We mm. need just to uh, valorize and take off what we have in, uh, in all regions that, can, that are in Italy, from north to south, and put them in a sort of uh, really strong uh, practical network and in order to become a sort of a, a new incubator, maybe the incubator for Europe. Mm. It happened in Israel in 30 years, and uh, uh, I think that uh, we are on the right way to do it in Italy, because I see many new realities and businesses and new approaches to the innovation that are very, very uh, virtuous and uh, impactful. And I think that they will sign the new way of innovation. Mm. Uh, the bigger uh, uh, challenge again is uh, also the government, because uh, it's important that the government understand that the power of Italy that is into the entrepreneurs and industries. Mm. Uh, so uh, I say always that in the end, and independently of the government, Italy is alive thanks to the entrepreneurs. And to the industries. That is Aye. true, but is it not possible to pursue in this mm. way now. We need to have the support of the government and we need to have government that has the, the right knowledge and competence to take the right decision. Mm -hmm. And this is the time to do it, and uh, more than in the past, because of the new technology, new business are going on. We have the opportunity to do it. We have an example like Entity Data, that is a Japanese uh, software 
um, industry that opened uh, its uh, um, uh, most important center of research in Silicon Valley and the second one in South Italy because they defined, founded in South Italy a group of very uh, incredible scientists in AI and cybersecurity. So mm. they decided to go there. Wow. So it's one of, of few examples, but uh, it is important to start to pursue in the right way. Mm. We hope. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, yeah, it's very interesting. And you raised some super interesting points. And I see also that we uh, have reached uh, the end of our allocated time. So I thank you so much for your time uh, to be on the podcast. This is a conversation that obviously needs uh, not 20 minutes, but it needs uh, months to be had and probably years. Um, but thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope it inspired somebody watching um, to take a different direction and to see maybe Italy uh, beyond the pizza pasta yes. image that it has been given. So thank you very much. I hope to and thank you for this invitation. Thank you very much. Thank you.